So in this week's Global Health Insights, I would like to address the question of what we think is going to happen in China. And during the past year, trying to model the course of the epidemic in China has been extremely challenging. When we saw Omicron pass through Hong Kong, the surprise to many was the large number of deaths in the elderly. And at the root cause of Omicron's toll in Hong Kong was that in the over 80 population particularly, there was relatively low vaccine coverage because of lack of confidence in some aspects of vaccination. And so the question comes, what will happen in China when there's widespread transmission of Omicron? And we at various points have predicted that this would happen uh, in the spring or in the summer or in the fall given the economic costs of pursuing the zero COVID strategy. Now, many people have expected that China would ease policy once the party Congress was over. And again, we're hearing rumors that there may be a shift away from a zero COVID strategy. But the basic Hong Kong problem still exists in China. You have a substantial fraction of the over 80 population in almost every province that is not vaccinated. In the rest of the population, you have a vaccine that has less effectiveness than some of the RNA vaccines that many other countries have used. And there is not widespread availability at all for uh, antivirals such as Paxlovid. So we do expect that at the point, at some point in the future, when it's unsustainable to continue a zero COVID strategy, there will be widespread transmission of Omicron and that will actually have a considerable death toll in the over 80 population. Now, things that can be done to manage this, uh, given we do expect that at some point there you have to give up on the zero COVID, you can't maintain that forever, or, or we don't believe you can. Then the question is, can you slow the transmission and keep the burden on the health system uh, at a more manageable level so that hospitals are not overwhelmed. And that's sort of one of the options that are available. Using uh, some less restrictive but still some form of mandates to slow Omicron transmission. Uh, there's already pretty widespread mask use, so that's not going to change very much of, of the trajectory. The other strategy or option is would China uh, change course and actually try to vaccinate particularly the older population with the more effective um, RNA vaccines. But even there, they still have the fundamental problem of lack of trust in that population with um, the, the vaccines, even the Chinese made vaccines. And it's not at all clear that there will be enough trust to get high vaccination coverage to avoid the death toll in that age group. And then lastly is the strategy of trying to acquire and have available, particularly for that high-risk group, uh, the over 80s, uh, you know, having access to antivirals. However way we look at it, it's very likely that the next few months uh, are going to be quite challenging for China. If we've learned anything from our systematic reviews around um, the, long, the, 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 the patterns of resistance after infection, is that infection with different strains of the virus does induce considerable immunity that lasts for preventing death quite a long time and for preventing infection quite a long time as long as there isn't a new subvariant that comes along. And in fact, our systematic reviews do show, and, and we expect uh, they'll be coming out more publicly in the near course, that uh, the immunity from natural infection is as good as and longer sustained than immunity from vaccination. So put that together, it means that the populations at greatest risk in the world are those that have avoided a lot of transmission and have gaps in vaccination. Uh, and that's exactly the case for, for China. So there's always the concern around uh, the large volume of transmission leading to uh, an increased probability of new variants. And certainly that has to be true at some statistical level, that if you have billions of infections, you're more likely to see new variants emerge. But it's not clear how big an issue that is because it's eventually there will be 
all the people who are, are susceptible in China will eventually get infected. Are we better off seeing that spread over six months or nine months or three months or two months? Not clear, um, since risk is proportional to the number of infections of, of a new mutation, for example. The, the perhaps, you know, the news that should make us a l less alarmed is that we've had billions of Omicron infections this year, and yes, we have seen new subvariants, BA2, BA5, XBB, you know, B111 uh, emerge, but none of them have been a dramatic change. They've had some immune escape, but they have not had increased severity. So we don't know, of course, uh, but it's not as if uh, having a concentrated period of, you know, half a, mil half a billion infections is really that different than having it spread over uh, a few more months, which would happen with stronger controls on transmission. As we look forward, there's always so the risk that uh, as time goes by, the natural immunity from, for example, the huge Omicron wave that infected so many people in the world will start to wane. And we will start to see more people at risk of uh, future subvariants of Omicron or other variants, which could be uh, more concerning. And so it's not as if the only place in the world that's at great risk is China. It's just that that's the biggest concentration right now for that at-risk population. So a situation for which there's no obvious solution, because neither the you know, zero COVID strategy forever is going to work, nor is there any indication that China will try to deploy better vaccines or have access to antivirals. And that leaves us in this situation where it's probably going to be a balancing act they pursue of, of trying to have transmission and having it slower, but it won't in the end change the death toll. Uh, and so that is the situation we find ourselves in for COVID in China in, in the coming months.